Have you ever thought about how Air Force pilots fly the $32 million MQ-9 Reaper? But how do these pilots learn to fly these unmanned aircraft vehicles so precisely? Putting together cutting-edge technology and skilled workers is the key. So buckle up, because we're going to look into the secrets of how Air Force drone pilots handle the MQ-9 Reaper during their dangerous boot camp flights. Let's get started. The MQ-9 Reaper drone, a movable box that can fly over the New Mexico high plains, has significantly changed the way wars are fought in the last 20 years. It is considered the most valuable plane in terms of value, and General Qasem Soleimani of Iran was killed by a rocket attack in 2020. However, concerns have been raised about civilian casualties, particularly in the context of drone warfare. The U.S. military claims that a drone strike in Kabul today killed only civilians, not an ISIS suicide bomber as initially claimed. In 2021, a Reaper was part of a strike in Kabul that killed 10 people, seven of them children. The drone was part of a strike that involved a white car that appeared to belong to someone with ties to ISIS. The Air Force has stated that drone warfare keeps pilots safe by keeping them out of battle zones, but critics argue that pilots who are hundreds of miles away make choices that may lead to mistakes due to distance. The Air Force uses a process called soak and study of an objective area to ensure they are targeting the right target and considering other concerns. In January 2022, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin instructed the Pentagon to create a plan to deal with civilian deaths in drone warfare. The Civilian Harm Mitigation and Response Action Plan was completed in August 2022, highlighting areas for improvement in drone pilot training. Insiders visited Cannon Air Force Base in Clovis, New Mexico, to observe how pilots are taught to fly these unmanned planes. The Air Force has been using various remotely piloted airplanes for years, including the MQ-1 Predator, which was initially designed for spying. However, in 2001, it was changed to fire missiles and sent to U.S. air sites near Afghanistan. The MQ-9 Reaper was the replacement for the MQ-1 Predator due to its better features and longer range. The Reaper is known for its persistence and ability to stay in the sky for up to 20 hours at a time. The 12th Special Operations Squadron starts its training mission with a review before takeoff. The plane weighs 4,900 pounds when empty and can carry up to eight laser-guided missiles, including Hellfires that can hit targets on the ground from the air. A cutting-edge sensor takes in all images from the drone, and Raytheon's multi-spectral targeting systems are built into the Reaper. These systems allow the drones to spy on targets from a long distance, track them, and acquire them. The ground control station, consisting of two cockpits, allows the Reaper to go anywhere in the world because it can be placed on any plane needed. The data devices on the ground connect these towers to the ground making a line-of-sight data link possible. By itself, the Reaper can go about 1,150 miles from the Global Control Station GCS, and up to 1,611 miles with an added update. The Air Force says that having a ground control station allows for assistance that they cannot have on a traditional aviation mission. For example, if a search and rescue mission requires a doctor or survival expert to assess someone on the ground, the crew can have them on board. After the pre-flight briefing, the crew and instructors step into a large bay full of portable racks that resemble those inside the GCS. The team began with a basic launch to hand over to the mission control element, ensuring that all data links were working and the engine was turned on. They flew around the pattern once before taking off to perform a high-stakes training mission at the range. They simulated having hellfire on the wing of the aircraft and found a target to engage with. The team had to troubleshoot some issues, such as a missile that wasn't working properly, which was good training for their launch and recovery pilots. The team also had the opportunity to troubleshoot some issues, such as a missile that wasn't working properly, which is kind of something you don't get to do every day. It was good training for the launch and recovery pilots. The team had to go to status and station status to be ready to go land on a planet that's broken in various ways. 
The team had to get consent from the pilot before firing the missile, which involved crew coordination between the operators of the aircraft and the tactical controllers of the aircraft. The pilot had to terminate the laser, cease the laser, and terminate the master arm safe. This ensured that the plane could be sent into a high-threat mission area without risking losing their bodies, which helps decision-makers a lot. The U.S. military has learned over time that it needs to do these things, and that's what they hope to see in the future. The Pentagon's 2022 Civilian Harm Mitigation and Response Action Plan includes official acknowledgement of harm, cases for civilian compensation, and steps to stop mistakes from happening again. While removing drone pilots from conflict zones can limit physical harm to airmen, they still deal with the impacts of war, like post-traumatic stress disorder. Pilots are not robots, and it is an emotional burden to decide whether to shoot or not shoot, which comes with an incredible emotional burden. After turning, the team had to reload the weapons for the handover. With every military mission, there's a moral imperative to make sure that the pilots are the best they can be at their job. The team takes pride in their ability to do the full mission over here as launch and recovery pilots while maintaining the proficiencies and currencies for the weapons. Despite its complicated past, the MQ-9 Reaper continues to be a key military asset. As the U.S. moves away from some of its previous theaters of conflict, the Reaper continues to contribute to the mission of integrated deterrence for any would-be adversaries or competitors in the various spaces around the world where there are competing and conflicting resources and priorities for objectives, such as security objectives. The Reaper continues to make headlines, such as the killing of Islamic State group leader Usama al-Muhajir in July 2023 and the collision of a Russian fighter jet with a Reaper over Syria four months earlier. This is it for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, then share your thoughts in the comments and also share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can never miss our video.